This is Steve Piloff from George Mason University. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. Um, in this example, we want to find X, which is the amount of the regular annual payment made by investment A. So what's going on with investment A? It's worth 18000 has an expected return of 7.6% per year, and it'll make regular annual payments of X, which we're trying to find, for eight years. So we know there's going to be eight payments because they're made for eight years and they're annual payments. And it's first payments in one year. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years. Also, it'll make an extra payment of 5,000 in six years. And so we want to figure out what are these X's. And so what we're going to take advantage of is the fact that the present value of all of these cash flows is equal to 18,000 when discounted by 7.6%. Now we cannot do this in one simple step in the financial calculator. N is 8 because there's 8 regular payments, but N is 6 for the extra payment because it's happening in 6 years. And since those things are not equal to each other, we can't do it in one step. Remember, N has double duty. It's the number of payments, also the distance between PV and FV. And so when they're the same, you can do it in one step. Not the case here. So what we're going to do is take advantage of the fact that the present value of all of the investment's cash flows is equal to the present value of the annuity, which is the eight regular payments of X, plus the present value of this extra 5000 in six years. That's the... Cash, that reflects the cash flows that we're going to get over the next eight years from this investment. Their present value is equal to the value of the investment, which is 18000 So let's find the present value of 5000 in six years, and then subtract that from 18000 and we know that the present value of the regular annual payments will be equal to that difference, and we'll be able to find X. So we know that if we get $5,000 in six years, that's equivalent to getting $3,222 today. So if the present value of all the cash flows associated with the investment is $18,000, and the present value of the only one that's not part of the annuity is $3,222, which is the $5,000 in six years, then those eight regular payments have a present value of $14,700. And $78. Present value of the X's is 14778. The present value of the 5,000 is 3222. And together they're equal to 18,000, which is what we're told the value of the investment is. So now what do we have to do is find the payment associated with an eight period annuity, because the first payment's in one year. That has a present value of 14778. So, eight payments starting in one period. The sum of those payments is 14778. You get the negative sign because of the sign convention. Discount rate, expected return of 7.6%. What are each of those payments? $2,532.69. So, 25, 32, 69, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 years, plus 5,000 in 6 years, take the present value of all those, add them up, you'll get 18,000. Here you're borrowing 20,000, 6 tenths of a percent per month, and you want to know what your monthly payment is. First payment's due in a month, and so a special payment is due from you in 5 years, and all monthly payments for five years are equal. So again, you're going to be making monthly payments for five years, so you know five times 12 is equal to 60. You know there's 60 payments. The first one's due in a month, so the first in a month, the second in two, the third in three, all the way out to the 60th in 60 months. In addition, 5,000 payment is due from you, so negative 5,000. And the present value of all these cash flows from you, all these negative cash flows, is negative 20,000. So again, we can attack it a couple of ways. The first way we can attack it are in multiple steps. We can say, okay, 
what's the present value of 5,000 in five years? Find that present value, subtract it from 20, and then we know that the regular cash flows have to offset that difference, and we can find the payment associated with that. So paying $5,000 in five years is equivalent to paying $3,492 today. And again, notice it's in five years, but because we're looking at months, we have a rate per month, n is not equal to 5, n is equal to 60. 60 months, because months are our unit, because we're given a rate of 0.6% per month. So again, in 60 months, cash flow of negative 5,000, because you're going to be paying that out. Solve, you get PV of 34.92, opposite. Paying 5,000 in 60 months is like paying 34.92 today. So all the cash flows have to add up to negative 20. This one of 5,000 is worth 34.92, so all of the regular cash flows for the five years have to add up to $16,508. n is 60, we're in n mode, and we're going to be looking for the payment. There's 60 of them, and again, monthly payment for five years, and we have the rate. We know the present value of all those is 16,508, because we're going to be paying, and they have to offset 16,508, because the 5,000 offsets 34,92. So what is the monthly payment? $328.44. So if we pay $328.44 in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 months, 7, 8, 9, 10, keep going to 60, plus we pay $5,000 in 60, the present value of all those is negative $20,000. So we get 20, we pay back all these payments, they have a present value exactly offsets what we got. Now, we can do it in one step. The annuity has 60 monthly payments. The balloon is in 60 months. So therefore, n equals 60, n mode. We're solving for payment. It's going to say, what is the amount such that we're going to get 60 of them starting in one period, or we're going to pay 60 of them. In addition, we're going to pay 5,000 in 60 months. So you just be careful. It's 5,000 in five years, but again, we're in monthly world. The present value of all these cash flows is negative 20, so you said PV is the opposite of that. You go ahead and you solve, and voila, we get the same answer we got when we did it in two steps. Our monthly payment is going to be $328.44.